Hey, Steve Bizzik Architect. Yeah, we are back in the Vibe Studio. And today's discussion, let's talk about raised heel or energy trusses. So you hear energy trusses, raised heel, I think there's another name that escapes me at the moment. But basically what we're talking about is we're talking about the heel height, right? And the heel height is the height from the top plate here to the top of the cord of the upper cord, top cord, right? Top of the top cord. And usually in most houses, this is probably anywhere from six inches to say 14 inches for me. And it's all dependent on climate. Obviously, if I'm doing a project in uh, say uh, South Dakota or Mi Minnesota, then yeah, that's probably in a 12, 14 inch range. If I'm doing one in Missouri, maybe it's a six or eight inch range. Also has to do with the overhang and the roof pitch and such. But what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was why do we do this? And obviously, um, or there's a couple ways to accomplish it, right? So in this case here, you can see there's actually a truss member there. It's a two by four stud that's happening that's carrying that cord up above and then we have some other truss members come in. They all get plated. That all sits down nice and neat on top of the top plate and there's our standard wall or common stud. This one appears to probably be right around uh, 10 inches I would guess. And the other thing to notice is you can see we have our sheathing coming up on the outside to keep those from uh, racking on both sides. But the other thing to notice is that we also are doing a vented roof there. But <clears throat> as far as the heel goes, on a standard truss, this cord or that point would literally be sitting on the plate, right? And what's happening there is this dimension, which is three and a half, but if I did it in a vertical, it might come out to say a little bit larger than four inches. And that four inches would sit above the plate. All of that insulation would get squeezed down into that four inches. So you might in fact have, you know, 18 inches of insulation here, but by the time it got down to a standard truss, you know, it's down in that range and you don't want that. We want to maximize our insulation levels out over the top plate. Remember one of my favorite words, continuity. If I'm going to pack this with insulation, I want that insulation to be continuous through this system. So I want to be able to pack that relatively high with uh, <clears throat> insulation there so that I can maximize it. You've probably all have heard of the term ice dam, right? Well, part of the problem with ice dams are when that truss was down here and we didn't do a raised heel, then you'd get a little bit of insulation here, but you would have some major heat loss in that area. It would melt that water it would go down to the overhang freeze because it was cold and it would build a dam and build back up the water. So energy heels gets us that insulation in there. Now another type, <clears throat> one that in fact I'm more familiar with is this one. And this one we call this piece a slider. At least that's what I was taught from a truss manufacturer. So I don't know if it's an industry common term or if in fact just that trust company uses the term slider but basically what the slider is you have the bottom cord you have that top cord and then depending on what this heel height is right that's our heel height depends on the size of the slider and how far it gets pushed in Basically, all this slider is, in this case, this is a two by six, 
and they slide it down in here and basically split that top cord and that bottom cord to infill that dimension and basically elevate the uh, heel height of that truss. So that's the second one that I know. You can either build them up with a vertical member or in a lot of cases, we just use that slider. So anyways, that's heel trusses, energy trusses, whatever you want to call them. Until next time, long live our buildings.